Hey, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the elementary OS on VirtualBox. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up our browser and head over to Google and we'll just do a quick search for elementary OS. And it's going to most likely be the very first link that pops up. So the official domain is elementary.io. You can see right here, click on that. So the way they've structured this download is by giving a donation of whatever amount you want. You can put in a custom donation. I'm sure you can go as low as a dollar up to whatever you like. I'm going to select 20 bucks and I'll put in my personal information and I'll click on download. So we'll enter our personal information and we'll just jump forward to the download. So here we go. We're going to be looking at the minimum requirements for this operating system, and it's going to be a dual core 64 bit processor, four gigs of RAM, 15 gigs SSD, internet access, and then a 1024 by 768 resolution. We, these are all fine for my system. So we're going to go ahead and start creating the virtual machine by clicking on new. And in the name section, we're going to type in the name and I'm just going to put in the name of the operating system, elementary OS. The machine folder I'm leaving as default. Okay, so in the drop down menu, we're going to select Linux. And then in here, we'll be looking for Ubuntu 64 bit, and we'll select that. Okay, everything looks good. And what we can add is click on next. All right, so for memory size in the system requirements, we see that we need at least four gigs of RAM. So I'm going to move it up. And move it up to we can go past four we'll go over to about six six megs sorry six gigs so we'll go to about six gigs uh, okay so for the virtual hard disk create a virtual disk now we can leave that as default and click on next hard disk file type we're going to select the virtual box disk image click on next and then for storage on physical hard disk we're going to leave it as dynamic okay so for file size uh, we need at least 15 gigs. Okay, so we'll move it up to about 20 gigs. That looks good and click on create. All right, so we're, now we're back at the main window. We're not done yet. We do have to make a few modifications. We're gonna click on settings. And inside settings under the advanced tab, under general, we're gonna select bi-directional for both clipboard and drag and drop. This allows us to share files and folders. Uh, with the virtual box system we already moved it up to six gigs which is good for processors we're going to boost it up all the way to the edge of the green four processors acceleration we're not going to do anything here and display we don't need to do anything uh, but under storage we are going to have to select the image so it's empty right now click on that then the little disk on the side and then you can choose a disk file so this is going to be where you downloaded the ISOs. For me, it's in my downloads folder. I can select it and then click on open. Okay, and then it just populates in here and you can see that. And then we don't need to make any more modifications so we can go ahead and click on okay. So we've done everything we need to do and now we can get ready to start the virtual drive. Okay, so now we're ready to start so we can click on the start button. And this is going to initiate the virtual box and it'll pop up here. Here we go. So it's automatically looking for the startup disk. We have the ISO selected already, so we can just click on start. And now it's going to begin the installation process by booting into the. OK, so we'll just let this boot up right now and I'll speed this up a bit. OK, so here we go. We have the wizard now opened up and so we have the option to either try it or actually install it on the system trying would mean just temporarily doing a live setup we're going to select english and click on install elementary because we're going to actually install it in the virtual disk so that and here we go so the first thing it's going to ask us for is the keyboard layout we're going to leave the default as us english and then click on continue next it wants to know if you want us automatically download software updates we're going to check this box now you don't have to install third-party software um, but i'm going to i'm going to make sure everything gets downloaded all at once during the installation so click on that and click on continue okay next we have the installation type now we're going to select the first one which is default it's going to erase the disk 
Uh, there is nothing in here. This is a virtual setup, so it's fine to leave it checked and click on next. We don't need encryption or anything else. Uh, we get a little warning here that there will be changes to the drive, which is fine. We can click on continue. That is just to confirm that we'll be erasing and starting from scratch. So where are you? So by default, we're in, so by default, we're showing up in New York. We're going to leave that as is and click on continue. And who are you? So we're going to ask, it's going to ask us for our name. We'll just type in Geekwar here. It automatically populates the computer name and the username. And now we just have to type in a password. So I'll go ahead and type in a password here and I'll confirm the password. Okay, and then you can click on continue. So this is the username and password that you're gonna need when you log into it for the first time. So just remember what you write in here. And now it's gonna to begin to copy files. So this will take a bit of time and I will speed it up for you. Okay, so now that the installation is complete, we'll be prompted to restart the computer. So we can go ahead and click on restart. It wants you to remove the medium. There is no USB drive. We're actually doing this virtually, so that doesn't matter. We can just go ahead and click on enter. And now the virtual box is gonna reboot and we'll be back in it to finish up the installation. Okay, so now we're prompted to log in here. Now this again is gonna be the username and password that we had created during the installation phase. So you can go ahead and type in your password here and I'll go ahead and do that right now. Okay, and here we go. We're at the main screen now and it's gonna to wanna to just wrap up the installation by asking a few questions. Location services, it's up to you if you want it on or off. We'll keep it on here, click on next. And then the nightlight feature, it automatically just changes the temperature color of the screen. Housekeeping, if you want to delete all the temporary files, you can select that. And it has its own app center. So you can browse the apps that come with the operating system and click on next. And we're done. So you can click on get started and you're going to get the desktop that we have here. Everything looks pretty familiar if you've used Ubuntu before. Uh, not a lot has changed. Overall, the experience is going to be pretty much the same. When we open up the screen like this, you can notice that you're not going to be able to get a full screen. And what you're going to have to do in order to do that, here, let me just full screen it right now. So that's maximizing the window. And we have a bunch of spaces on the side. So the issue here is you need to install guest editions. Now, in order to install guest editions, it, unfortunately, it's not as easy as just clicking on the uh, CD image and putting it into the PC. Uh, what we have to do is actually run a few steps using the terminal. Uh, I'm going to be creating a separate video for that because there is quite a few steps involved and I want to have a step-by-step -step process listed there for you. Uh, so we'll put the link in the description below as well as in that video we'll also have all the commands listed for you as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found this useful and if you did we'd, we'd appreciate a like um, and if you subscribe you'll be able to see any new operating systems that we're going to be throwing on VirtualBox. We have quite a few more flavors of Linux that we'd like to do. Uh, thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.